does God judge with sickness and disease? This question comes up because of what Paul Rott wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And here's what he says. Verse 29, for those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning or if we would judge ourselves, we would not come under judgment. So people will say, well, there's a proof that God judges with sickness and disease. Yes, but you need to understand what this actually means. What does God's judgment actually mean in our life? Now, first of all, the Apostle Paul is not telling us that God doesn't want us healed. In fact, he's telling us the opposite. He says, start judging yourself so you won't have to come under judgment. You understand? So Paul's wanting you to be healed. He don't want people to die early before their time, right? Or as the uh, Solomon says, why die before your time? See, he doesn't want that to happen, but it's going to take judging ourselves. So this brings us to an interesting question. Does God make us sick? And the answer is no. God doesn't do evil. James chapter 1 says, every good gift is from above, uh, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights. But how do we then explain, especially in the Old Testament, God afflicting people with sickness and diseases? Well, the way we understand it is quite simply this. God's judgment is in the form of seed time and harvest. You say, what, what do you mean by that? Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Now, here's a question. Who causes the seed to grow and produce? God does. Remember Paul wrote, I, uh, Apollos planted, I watered, but God made the seed to grow. Who makes the seed to grow? God does. So because he makes the seed to grow, we call that reaping the judgment of God. It doesn't mean that God is actually afflicting a person with diseases, but rather through their bad sowing, they're sowing to the flesh, and of the flesh they reap corruption and destruction. And when you sow to the flesh, you're going to reap bad things. Just as if you sow something good, doesn't God bring you blessings? And wouldn't you credit God as the one who blessed you? Well, if you credit God as the one who blessed you, then you have to give credit to also the bad seed that grows up to bring judgment to you. So what God does is he caused you to reap what you sow. And since he caused it, we call it God's judgment. But it doesn't mean that God is actually personally afflicting people with sickness. But from our point of view, we recognize we wouldn't have sickness and disease if God didn't say, you're going to die if you eat this fruit. And when Adam and Eve ate the forbidden fruit, they died. And they died because God said they're going to die. You see, so in that sense, that's God's judgment. Now, somebody might say, well, I don't believe God judges anymore. Well, listen, the God of the Old Testament is still the God of the New Testament. Listen to what Paul writes in Romans chapter 1. Now, he's the New Testament writer. And he says in verse 18, Romans 1, 18, The wrath of God is being revealed from heaven against all. All the godlessness and wickedness of people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Now, Paul did not say the wrath of God will be revealed. See, everyone agrees one day God's final judgment is going to take place. But Paul speaks it in the present. God's wrath is being revealed even right now. And how is it being revealed? In the law of sowing and reaping. When you sow bad things, you're going to reap bad things. If you didn't reap bad things, you probably would never repent. And that's why God allows us to reap bad things so that we would wake up to our sinful life and turn from, turn from our sin and turn toward God. You know, what if God made it so that no matter what you do, you always got good? If you did bad, you still got good. If you did good, you still got, got, good, got good. Well, you would never repent from doing bad. So God made it so that when you do bad, bad things happen. That's called God's judgment. It's sowing and reaping. But listen to what Paul says. The wrath of God is being displayed against people who suppress the truth. God's wrath is not being displayed on God's children. Paul writes in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9, listen to this. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, come on. 
you got to shout hallelujah. Aren't you glad we're not the ones appointed to wrath? So God's mercy and grace is for the child of God. And for the sinner, if they will repent and turn to the Lord, they can receive salvation. And once a sinner receives salvation, they are God's child. And therefore, they are entitled to all the benefits of Calvary's cross. So that by Jesus' stripes, they're healed too. But the sinner cannot claim, by Jesus' stripes, I'm healed. Because they haven't come to the Lord yet. Therefore, God's wrath is being displayed. So when we see bad things happening, when people do bad, that's the wrath of God. That's God's judgment. And for the child of God, when a child of God continues to persist in being a carnal Christian, that's what Paul wrote in the Corinthian church. He's saying, you know, some of you got sick, some of you are weak, some of you are dying early because you haven't repented. And he says, you're carnal Christians. You're living according to the flesh. You tolerate sinful life. You tolerate a man sleeping with his with his father's wife, his stepmother, you tolerate that and you let him be a leader in the church? What's wrong with you? He says you abuse the gifts of the spirit. Some of you, you take communion and then the next day or the day before, you you take the supper of demons. You, you, you still participate in idol worship. And no wonder why Paul says, that's why you're being sick because you're sowing to the flesh. But let me give you one proof that shows that God doesn't directly make us sick. Paul dealt with that man who was sleeping with his stepmother. And here's what Paul says. When you're all gathered together and my spirit's with you, hand him over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Isn't that interesting? Why did he say hand them over to God so God can make him sick and destroy his flesh? No, he says hand him over to Satan. See, when you sow evil, you open the doors to demons. And when demons come into your life, that's the judgment of God. Isn't that what happened with King Saul? He, he was full of envy and jealousy and a demon, demons came into him, afflicted him. And the Bible called it God's judgment. So God's judgment is still real. But please don't think God's directly sending or doing evil. In the Old Testament... The Hebrew language didn't have permissive tenses like permit or allow. Therefore, in your Bible, it always says, and God did this, even if it's something evil like sending demons or sicknesses, because there was no way in the Hebrew language to describe God as permitting something. So when God permits you to reap evil and he permits demons to come into your life because of what you're doing, then that is God's judgment. But he himself doesn't do evil nor does he make anyone sick. I hope this teaching has helped you.